Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And today we feature the latest masterpiece from Richard Stolk's Sudoku Variant series. This is something like 280 in the series and they are, they're all brilliant. Um, but occasionally Richard lets us know that um, this is a particularly special one. And um, we're going to take a look at this today. It's three stars out of five for difficulty on Logic Masters Germany. Um, so it should be approachable, whatever that means. Um, now, before we begin, I've uploaded for patrons of the channel uh, today uh, My Solve of Cosmology by Bobuardo da Vinci, which was the puzzle that mysteriously tied in the community poll that we ran. Um, and Mark was right. Uh, he, he said that he was quite pleased he got to do snake sums by quarter through because he suspected that was easier. Well, let me tell you, it was easier. Uh, cosmology was very, very hard. It's a brilliant puzzle. It really is. It's sort of two overlaid star battles on top of each other with some physicists and uh, dark and astrologers looking for stuff. It really is a great, great sort of logic problem um, but I did not find it easy and if you want to see me struggle well it's there for you on Patreon at the moment. Um, now what are the rules of this pivot Sudoku as Richard calls it and I think that this is a um, inspiration for this puzzle came from uh, another person who's featured on the channel a few times Stefan Bura um, and the rules are as follows we've got normal Sudoku rules for cells with arrows the first n digits in all directions of the arrows must have an equal sum where n is the digit placed in that cell. Digits may repeat in sums with a diagonal direction and not all possible hour arrows are given. So let's imagine the central square there was a three. I think what this is saying then is that those three cells, those three cells, these three cells, and those three cells would all have equal sums. Um, yeah, that's all I know. I mean, it's quite incredible, actually, when you think about if that's the restriction, just this sort of paltry number of arrows in the grid is apparently enough to produce a unique solution. So do have a go. I mean, this will be wonderful. I know that before I even start. Um, and the way to play, of course, is to click the link under the video. And with that, let's get cracking. Um, now, with all of these puzzles where there are arrows pointing around the grid, what I tend to do is to look for arrows that are close to an edge, this arrow, for example, because this only sees a maximum of two cells in all of the directions. So this has to, oh, in fact, it can't be one. I was going to say this has to be one or two, but if this is a one, then you'd have to put the same digit into all those three squares, which you know, we know that's not going to work. So this must be two. And that means that this, this and this all have the same. Oh, I was going to say this, this and this all have the same sum. But then I noticed this arrow. Now, this arrow has to be a one because it can't be greater than two and it can't be two. So that's a one, which means that square and that square contain these two cells here in yellow must have the same digit. Uh, in them. So actually, maybe if I colour those, I'll remember that. Uh, now that arrow looks particularly useless because that could be six in that direction. Right, OK, but we get this arrow because this arrow is pointing down the grid as well as up the grid. Now down the grid, it sees a maximum of three squares. So the op options for this square, given two is unavailable, a one. Now if it was one, that cell and that cell would have to add to the same number. They'd have to be the same. That doesn't work. So this must, I think, be a three. Now this one can't be three or one and it can be a maximum of four so that's a two or a four maybe one two three one two three one two three i'm now wondering if i can combine these clues somehow um i'm quite seeing how to do that just let me think about this for a moment sure um, so we've got maybe we can work on this so this two clue 
means this, this, and this have the same sum. Right, okay, so this this can't be... This can't be 6, obviously. There aren't three ways of making two digits add to 6 when you can't repeat a digit. It can't be 7, because although there are three ways of adding to 7, 2 is not an available way, so we couldn't use 2, 5. Similarly, for 8, we couldn't use 2, 6, and there are only three ways of adding to 8. So this must be... This two clue is adding this domino, this do oh, this domino, this and this must be adding to at least nine. And this one here means that it can't be adding to more than ten. So, so these are all adding to nine or ten, which means this is an eight or a nine. Oh, and I can use parity can I I can oh this is nice right okay and on which way round is this going to go so if it's summing those yeah okay so let's we can use we know that this is adding to 9 or 10 now we know that this two clue is pointing at this domino so this domino also happens to be what's left over once you sort of use up this three clue because this three clue is summing those six cells. So I, I actually know if we think about this, given we know that these two sets of yellow cells are um, adding to the same number, I know that these three cells must add to an odd number because if they don't, um, let's say that these three squares added to 10, for example, because I know the column adds to 45 because it will contain all of the digits from 1 to 9. If these three cells add, add, to, add to 10, then those cells would add to 35 and this would have to be 17 and a half and this would have to be 17 and a half, which won't work. So those two squares must they must be even, so that once I add the 3 in, I get an odd total. So if these have to be even, the 2 is pointing to clues adding up to 10, not 9. So this is a 9. And, ah, okay, and we can't use 2, 8, so we must use 3, 7. 3, 7 can't be here, so this is 4, 6. This is 3, 7. These two are 5 and 8, which means that square's a 5 or an 8 because it's the same as this one. That's a very, very nice beginning, isn't it? So now, in fact, now, if we know this adds to 10, we can work out what those three squares add to, of course, because now we know we've got 13. So 45 minus 13 is 32. So these six cells add to 32, but each triple is um, has to have the same sum. So i.e. they both add to 16. If this adds to 16, these two add to 14. And we can't use 6. So this is a 5-9 pair. And this down here must be 1, 7 and 8. And this is a 5-9 pair. So this makes this an 8, which makes this an 8 because we know it's the same as... Um, these purples are the same digit. So we get off to a nice start. Oh, and now I can use parity again on this one. If this is 4, it's summing those squares and those squares, which means that if, if we make the sum of these bottom squares x, we've got 2x plus 4 has got to equal 45. Well, you can see that's not going to work unless we can use um, non-integers. So this can't be 4, that's got to be 2. Now these two squares... And these two squares have to have... the same sum. I'm just wondering whether we can do... I feel like I can do something to at least restrict this a little bit. Let's look at the options for this square. This square can't be 1, 2, or 3. It's got to be 4, 6, or 7. Is that all it can be? It can't be 1, 2, 3. It can't be 5. 
it can't be eight, nine, yeah, four, six, seven. So if this is four, these would have to add up to five, and that's impossible because one and two couldn't be used in the sum. So this is not four. If this is six, these two would add to seven. These two would have to be three and four. There's a three here, so this would have to be three, four. If this is seven, these two would have to add to eight without using one or two. So these would have to be three, five. Oh, ooh, well, they can't be three, five because that square can be neither three nor five. So this is four. This is three. That fixes the three, seven at the top, which gives us a six here, which we could have got anyway because we know they add up to seven. Those two squares have got to be one and seven, I think. These two squares have got to be five and nine. These squares have got to be two, four, and six. Okay. Um, well, so far, so good. It's a brilliant puzzle, but at least we've managed to start it. Unlike so many recently, I've not sat there floundering for ages and ages. So this clue, maybe, we've got four or six. So if this was six, those six cells we could work out the sum of because they've got to be the balance for 45 in the row. So if this is six, five, six and seven adds to 18. So this would add to 27. That would mean that these squares have to add to 27. If this was six, that would be a four. So we'd have what would we have? We'd have 14, 15, 16, 17, 23. What did I need? 27. I can't get 27. That's impossible. Let's just double check this. In fact, let's put it in. If that's 6 and that's 4, these definitely have, have to add to 27, i.e. 45 minus 18. These would have to add up to 27, therefore. And we've got 14, 20, no, that would have to be a four, which it just can't be. So we know actually this is four, six like that. And look, look, now we know the sum of those. The sum of those is 22. So the sum of these is 22. 22 plus 16 is 38, which means these two squares have to add up to 7 without using 4 or 5. So this is 1. Oh, OK, this is 1, 6, and that's on an arrow. So if it was a 1, these two would be the same digit, which is impossible. So it's not. That's 6, that's 1. OK. Um, so this is saying that these six cells oh okay so if you look if we look along here now we're saying these six cells we actually know what they add up to they add up to 27 because we've, we've got six five and seven outside the sum six five and seven add to 18 so 45 minus 18 is 27 we've already looked at that a few times so if these six cells add to 27 obviously plus the six means those two have to add up to 12. So they've got to be 3, 9, 4, 8, or 5, 7. I've got no idea. Well, that one can't be 9 because it's on an arrow. If it was 8, you could act, this could actually be 8 because it would be summing all of those and all of these. And they will, of course, have the same value 45 minus 8. Um, but if that can't be nine, that can't be three. The central cell is, well, it's got the most arrows in the puzzle. One, two, three, four. So this has to, ah, this has to be, this has to be three or four because it can't be two. And it can't be one because that would put the same digit into those squares and that square and that square, which would obviously be nonsense. So, oh, OK, now look, if this is three, four, what can this be? Well, it only sees four cells above it, so it can't be higher than four and it can't be two. So this is three, four as well. 
So this is a 3-4 pair. Um, oh, and is this the parity trick again, isn't it? So if this is 4, then we're saying that the, the column should add to an even, dig, even number. We know the column adds to 45, which is not even. So this is not 4, this is 3, this is 4. So this, ah. Oh, okay. So what are the options left for this now? This can't be three, this can't be nine, therefore. So we're left with four, five, or seven, eight. Now, what we're saying is those three and those three sum to the same number. So we can, yeah, we can lock in the parity of this square. Let me just think about this. So these add to the same number. So they are both, the sum of these two yellow sequences is even. Still even after we add the 6 in. It becomes odd when we add the 3 in. The f total for the column needs to be odd. So I must add an even number. This must be even. This is 5 or 7. Which means this is a 4-8 pair. That's beautiful. It's just beautiful setting, isn't it? So this, this clue could still be an eight, look. And now, well, now I can limit a bit. If this square is four or eight, I can get the value approximately of what the three, three cells are that this clue is pointing at. Because if this is four, we've got four plus six plus three, that's 13. So 45 minus 13 is 32. So we'd have to have 16 in both of these runs. And if this is eight, 14, 17, 28, we'd have to have 14. So, so these runs here either add to 14 or 16. I realize that should mean I can do something with that, but Um, ah, I've just noticed something I can do. 14 and 16, another knowledge bomb from Cracking the Cryptic coming up, are both even. So if they're both even, um, this is an even digit. Now, in order to keep this sum, these three squares even, therefore, I'd have to either add two more even digits or two more odd digits to this digit. Well, I can't add two more even digits because six, four, and eight have already gone from the column. So this must have two odd numbers in these positions. Whoops, sorry. Um, these are two odd numbers. So they are one, five, seven, or nine. And this must have the last even digit in it. So this has got two in one of those two cells, look. And now you're going to have to forgive my pencil marking here. I'm going to try and remember these twos are referring to column one rather than their boxes. Um, now, what did we say? This is either adding up to 14 or 16. So if this is adding up to 16, I need two more. Once I use the two, I need the other two cells to add up to 14 without using six. So this would be 2, 5, 9 as one possibility. Now if, on the other hand, that's not 2. In fact, that's not 9 either because of that 9 look. So if this is not 16, if it's 14, we use the 2. So then we need 2 cells adding to 12 without using 3, 9 or 4, 8. So we get 2, 5, 7. So that could, we'd have to have 7 to that, 7 to that, 7 to that. Okay. So, uh, so there's always a five. There's interestingly, uh, there's always a two and there's always a five in this run, which means there isn't a five in that run. And there is a one look. There's always a one in this run of three cells. And there's either a seven or a nine here. Uh, sorry, I know I'm being very slow here, but this is. I'm just trying to get my head around what the restrictions are. So we've either got a 7 or a 9 here, or we've got one of each, basically. The 7 and the 9 share themselves between these two regions. 
Um, ah, okay. Well, let's look this way then. Now we've got. Oh yeah, that might be interesting because these three cells. So these three cells add up to 14 or 16. So let's, I don't know, I don't know which, which way around is the best way to pick here. The other cells that we've got in the row add up to nine. So these, so these six cells together either add up to 23 or 25, which means these three cells either add up to 20 or 22. Bingo, bingo. This square cannot be a one, because if it is, I can never make those three squares even add up to 20. So that's a seven, this is a one. That removes, ah, look, oh yeah, this is cool. Look, it gives me a one in column one. If this can't be a one, where does the one go? It must go there. So that's not a one. Uh, these add to 20 or 22. So once we take off the seven, they add to 13 or 15. So if it's 13, this would have to be an eight because nine, four wouldn't work. If it's 15, this would have to be a six. So this square is even. Actually, this four is, I have actually got quite a lot of this diagonal look. So this four. Yeah, okay, and we know that this is adding up to 14 or six, 14 or 16. So if I add the three into that to cater for this clue, these four squares are either adding up to 17 or 19. So these four cells are adding up to 17 or 19, which means this square is a five or a seven. which is remarkably unhelpful. I can, of course, repeat digits along the diagonal, so I can't use this seven to sort of rule a seven out from this cell. Maybe down here then. So these are adding up to 17 or 19. Um, well, it's going to be quite tricky, isn't it? If that's an eight, that could be a five. That's 13, 14, 15. I know, oh, it's just about possible. What about if that's a nine though? If that's a nine, nine plus two plus seven. Ah, that doesn't work. If this is nine, nine plus two plus seven, is already 18 and I can't put one in there. So this square cannot be a nine, that's a five. Which is another, look, that's a nice breakthrough but it looks completely unhelpful. Now, the, the other thing we know, I suppose, is that those, these definitely add up, these four squares add up to an odd number. So these need to add up to an odd number. That's even. So at the moment, those two squares are definitely adding up to an odd number, which means these two must add up to an even number, which means that what does it mean? <laughs> uh... Is there any restriction there that's meaningful? don't know. This arrow, oh, this, oh, well, this arrow's been given. I hadn't, just hadn't looked at it yet. Look, it's three, one, four in its row, so it can only be a two, because it can't see more than three cells in its two directions. So that's a two. Ah, ah now hang on. So now I've got two even numbers here. Let 
Does that tell me anything? Um, those two had to add to an even number, didn't they? Got it. Got it. Now, okay. <laughs> this two was actually quite important because now this square has become restricted. If this is an eight, I know this has to be even in order to keep this, this total for this four, run of four cells odd. Now, it, so if this is eight, I've got to put an even number in here. Well, you can see two and four have gone. This would have to be at least a six. Six plus eight plus five is 19 before I take into account that square. So you break the bank. This has to be odd. Wow, that was not easy. That is not easy. Now that means this square has to be odd, which, ah, one, three. So it's got to be five, seven or nine. Well, actually, maybe we can, yeah, we can, it can't be 9, because that will, again, that will breach the 19. So, in fact, how do you keep those four cells now down to 19? You can only do it if you pick bare minimums for those two squares. It's great. It's just such good setting, this. Literally, you have to appreciate every little facet of this clue. It's gorgeous. So, this has to be 2. This has to be 5. That means that's a 7. So these should all be summing to 19 now. And you can see they do. Uh, oh, that's going to give me the value of that one. I've just seen that. But anyway, let's just see if we can get any more. 8 must go in one of those three cells because the 8s in rows 8 and 9 are locked into the same two. Uh, well, in boxes 7 and 9 are locked into the same two rows of the grid. And, uh, sorry, stuck again. One second. Um, okay, so. So maybe we use this one now. If we know we're looking for not, this is a 19 sum, we now know this is a 16 sum. If this is a 16 sum, I should now, I think, yeah, now I know that this is, this had a 2 and a 5 in it. So it must be a 2, 5 and a 9, which means that one's a 5. And there's no 7 involved in that. So this is nearly fixed. And this one can't be, so that's got to be seven, that's got to be eight, that's got to be four. I'm just trying to see if I can do some Sudoku to tidy up the rest of this row. Oh, this column, I beg your pardon. Right, anyway, let's look at the four clue here now. Those four cells have got to equal those four cells. Ah, in fact, that four, look, it's giving me a four, six pair there. Oh, and the eight's giving me an eight, one pair there. Let's, now, I'm going to get the value of this square now, because this four, those four squares add up to 19. So these four squares add up to 19. 19... 29, 29 and 13 is 42. That has to be a 3 to make the row add up to the right number. 45. Um, there's a 3 in one of these two squares. This square is this... I can't remember how I even got this square as... Um, how did I get this square? Is it was it from the three here? Yeah, because if it was, I should be able to get the value of those two. Yes, okay. If this is adding up to 16, 16, 25, 32, these have to add up to 13, which must mean they're eight and five. That's a nine, that's a nine, that's a two. 6 and 9 here, they've got to go there in box 1. That means those are 1 and 3. 
these two squares have got to be five and four. This one is almost done now. We're almost actually at the point where I can do Sudoku, um, God forbid. We've got these squares here have got to be one, six and nine. Ah, you can see that one can only go there in the row. So let's tidy that up and put a six, nine pair in here or six, nine pair in the row, if you see what I mean. This has got to be six, eight, nine to complete this row. So we've got a six, nine pair there. This can't be eight anymore. This square is hasn't got a great many options by the uh, arcane rules of Sudoku. Look, we've got, what can it be? It could be a two. It can't be a three, four or five. It could be a six, I think. It can't be seven or eight. And it, oh, it could be nine. Oh, bother. Um, Okay, so this is 2, 6, or 9, which means that this 2, right, no, that doesn't work. If this is a 2, these two cells sum up to 3, which means I may need to make those two squares summing up, sum up to 3, which is impossible given I can't use a 1 in them. So this is not 2, this is 6 or 9. So this 2's total is either 7 or 10. So this is either adding up to 7 or 10 without using a 1. Well, the 3. Ah, oh, that's clever. Yeah, look, this 3 is the clever thing here. Because if this is a 3, what can that square be now? Given that these two have to add up to 7 or 10, this would have to be 4 or 7 and it can be neither. It's just brilliant. It's just brilliant again. This can't be three. This is three. Oh, so now surely we can do this clue now. Because this clue is adding up to 19. Here we've got cells adding up to seven. So these two add up to 12. Oh, we could have double six. Very good role in backgammon. Um, in fact, it is double six because we can't put three in here to go with a nine. So those are a double six. That's not six anymore. That's not six anymore. So this must be a six. That must be a nine. And now I've fully used this clue. I fully... No, I haven't fully used this clue still. I still don't know what this is. Uh, there must be a one in one of those two cells. Look, so we get a one in the grid there by Sudoku. This clue may be. Well, I have to, it would be very useful to know if this was four or five, wouldn't it? Five is there. So there's a five in one of those two cells. I'm going to look at the options for this cell, I think, because maybe between the two of them, I can rule, you know, get the values of these two. So this square has got to be four, five, six or seven looking at the row. And you can see it can't be four or six. Yeah, this is good. So this only has two options, five or seven. Now we're looking for a sum of seven or ten. So if this is adding up to seven, this would have to be a two which unfortunately looks possible. If it's adding up to 10, this would have to be a five. That's interesting. I think this always has to be five because if it's seven, I can't put three here. So this is always five, but this is that we still don't know what this is. That five gives me the five and the four. That gives me the other arrow now. So those four squares are adding up to 20, which means these four add up to 20, which means this square is an 8. 8, 9. That's a 9 by Sudoku. These two squares have got to be 2. Oh, 7 and 2. We can do that. The 2 fixes that that's a 5 now, which means that one must be a 9. This square should be given. That should be an 8, I think. 
And I think now, I don't want to speak too soon, but I think we might have done all of the... I think we've done all of the arrows. So we're looking for four, six, seven there. One, two pair there. So that must be two, one in that order. That must be a two by Sudoku. Two by Sudoku. Those two squares have got to be three and seven, which we can do. These two squares have got to be four and eight, which we can do. That's an eight, therefore. This square should be gettable. That's a nine, I think. The one fixes the one and the three. That can't be seven. I don't know. Oh, I just didn't pencil mark it. So that's a four or six up here. These two squares have got to be five and seven, which we can get. Yeah, we're on the home straight. That must be seven now. Four, six, four. We still need three and six up here, which we can do. And there you go. I think that's what I'd submit. That's correct. It's a brilliant. Actually, I mean, just, you know, it's stunning. It's so, so clever, these sorts of things. Richard Stolk takes these ideas and just takes them up to 11 um, in Spinal Tap Speak. It's brilliant. Loved it. Uh, let me know how you got on in the comments. Uh, let me know where I was slow. I've no doubt I was slow as usual in places. Um, and I've, yeah, I do read all the comments. So yeah, I look forward to them too. So please do leave them if, if you feel minded to do so. And we'll be back later, of course, with another edition. Cracking the Cryptic.